Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here, and today we're going to be chatting over Skype with Australian artist Brody Rainbird. You may remember this guy on the show back in July 2018 when he was a member of the Australian country band The Wolf Brothers. Well, Brody has unfortunately left that band now, but he is there, still their touring guitarist, and he has just released his own solo self-titled EP, which you can go check out on Spotify. Go stream now, support local talent. But let's have a chat to him about this EP and how long it's been in the pipeline. Brody, it is a pleasure to have you on the show today. How are you going? Uh, thanks, Lauren. Thanks for having me. It's so always nice to talk to you. I'm good. I'm really good. That's fantastic. Even with the coronavirus and everything, we're, we're still getting through. We're going to talk about that. That's rubbish. We're going to talk about cool stuff like music and things that lift your vibration. Exactly. That's what the show is all about. Well, welcome back to Rave It Up. You know, the last time you were on the show was July 2018. Can you believe that? Yeah, and no, I actually saw it. I saw our Skype call. It's, I obviously don't do this very often because it's still in my little history thing. Yeah, it says over a year ago, last chatted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's crazy. Time has flown, but I'm so glad to have you back on the show. And everyone probably remembers the last time you were on the show was, you know, when you were still in the band, The Wolf Brothers, and we had a little chat about that, and at that time you were touring and a new album out. Unfortunately, you aren't in the band anymore, but you are still apparently their touring guitarist. So what yeah, made yeah. you uh, want to make that change? Got sick of being in behind the scenes. <laughs> I think at the heart of it, like I've, I've always been like my number one fear is doing a gig on my own, like singing and, and singing songs that I wrote. That was like the number one thing I was most afraid of in the whole world ever. Um, and I got sick of that. So I decided to start writing and try and get good at that. You know, we were doing all these writing trips in Nashville um, and I was just rubbish at it. And I was just like, oh, I hate this. Like, I really want to do something about this. So I guess in order to get better at music I started singing and writing and I started really falling in love with it and I did an open mic night and got that fear you know that initial fear sort of done and out of the way I do them all the time now so that's really cool but um yeah I just totally fell in love with it um and yeah I just sort of said to the boys I really want to do some of my own stuff now and it, it didn't really fit in with how the band was you know they've got some big news coming up soon I can't tell you much about it but didn't really fit in with those plans and um yeah for me to for me to sort of do this um i had to make the move of just sort of being a a contractor i guess you could say so i still you know i still get to play you know the, the number one thing i was worried about losing was was being on the road with my mates playing guitar um and i still get to do that i still want me to come and do all the shows and tours and stuff which is really cool um, and yeah, and I have the freedom to do whatever I want now. So there's no expiry date on that. You can still tour with them in the future as well while you're doing your own music. Yeah, as long as they have me, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> so it really started off as a bit of like a step outside the comfort zone a little bit. Massively, massively. Yeah. Um, and it turns out I, I loved it, you know, and I was trying to really, trying to really just get better at music so I could catch up to where everyone else was. And then I sort of realized that I wasn't catching up. I was kind of going another direction. And it was it was quite liberating and you know it felt awesome so i was just like i have to do this otherwise what's the point in being alive i have to do this you know yeah you'll always wonder what if <laughs> exactly yeah yeah so how long did you know that you were going to leave the band for was it kept a secret for a while before you released the news i think it was the last writing trip when we were in nashville and we did a little stint in canada and i was just like man i don't fit in here at all like this just is not working for me i'm pretty unhappy to be honest so you know i just had the chat and said i don't want to go back to america and probably don't want to continue on with what's happening with the wolf brothers i, I want a bit of freedom and it, you know it came down to a pretty black and white decision it was choose one or the other so yeah and the boys were really supportive they could uh, they understood they could see that i was unhappy and you know we, it was it was all pretty right really like i was surprised how well they all took it you know i'm, I'm really lucky to have the you know have them as close mates before Bandman, so it was, it was really good. Well, you guys are like family, so how could you expect it any other way? <laughs> exactly. But I guess also family's fight, so yeah, I kind of see both. <laughs> no, we were all good. We were all good. It's, yeah, again, I'm really surprised at how well, how smooth they all went. It was all meant to be then. Yeah. So are Tom and Nick just going to do it by themselves now? Are they going to bring in a new person or no I, I mean there was talk of that but I think that was just part of the confusion of, about what to do when, when it all happened mm. so I think they're gonna go I mean it's called the wolf brothers yeah and, it is and now it is the wolf brothers so 
you know, it kind of worked it to me. It makes perfect sense to have the two of them doing their thing. And, and technically, you're still in it because you're still the guitarist, as yeah, you were anyways. <laughs> me and Case, you know, we're, we're the contractors now. We rock up, do the gigs, and that's all we have to worry about. So. And then go home and work on your own music. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Casey's doing the same thing. Casey's recording some um, original music too, and he was looking at putting that out. So, you know, we're all doing stuff. Fantastic. I'll have to get in touch <laughs> with Casey as well. All right. So what do you think you're, before we move on to your own solo stuff too, kind of putting a bookend on the Wolf Brothers a little bit, what do you think your career highlight was with them? Do you think it was, you know, winning golden guitars or...? <laughs> that was certainly a, a wonderful night. That was yeah. a really, yeah, it was a nice um, way to sum up everything we'd done up to that point. That was really cool. But um, I don't think there's any particular highlight. I think, I mean, we've been doing this since high school. Like, it's been a good, you know, 10 years of on-the-road slogging. We've, we were talking about this last week. We've forgotten more gigs and more, you know, funny situations and crazy things and stupid people we've met over the years. We've forgotten more than we can remember. You know, you have to go back through, like, old photos and stuff to remember, oh, that's right, that happened. So I don't have any real highlight. It's just been such a great journey to, to go on with friends, you know, to start from just doing pub gigs to then eventually, you know, be playing in front of 12,000 people at, you know, a CMC festival or something like that. It's, it's mad. Like, it's crazy. Well, it'll always be memories in your mind, won't it? The whole thing is a career highlight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you have a self-titled EP out now, which everyone can go stream on Spotify and any music streaming platform, I guess. And yeah. last time that we did chat, you know, you were touring with the Wolf Brothers back in July 2018. And the, the show that I specifically went to, which I think was Penrith RSL, you sung on stage for the very first time. So were you always secretly singing off the stage, you know, keeping the hidden talent from us? And now you're finally bringing it out. <laughs> yeah, no, pretty much. I mean, I've constantly been working on this for the last four years, probably, four maybe a bit longer, uh, like was when I made the decision that, um, oh, I guess another part of this was that I was sick of trying to be an amazing guitarist. I was just like, it just wasn't going the way I wanted it to go. I, I put in three months, uh, like I got in touch with my old guitar teacher. I was like, look, I've really hit a wall. And he was like, okay, do this and that. And we put together like a two hour practice schedule, like a two or three hour schedule. And I did that for three months straight every day. And by the end of that, I was just like, I'm so over this. I just want to make music. So that was another thing that was sort of creeping up alongside it was that I was over just trying to be a guitarist and I wanted to expand. So, yeah, over the last three or four years, I've really been working on this and trying to write songs and trying to get better at that. And that's been a whole other thing too. I mean, I, I wrote some absolute rubbish songs to start <laughs> off with. But I'm getting better at that, I promise. And, like, even even now I'm already working on the next EP. I've got um, two or three tracks that are probably definitely going to go on that. Ooh. Yeah, I know. It's uh, I love this stuff. You know, it's great. I'm I'm really poor. I've got nothing going on, but it's it's the best time of my life. It's really cool. Well, look, right after this whole drama of coronavirus, you're gonna come out with a bang. You'll be like, oh, I've already done like a whole album. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, let's let's do that. I want to do that. It Thanks might be so. a really good time to knuckle down and really just write some cool songs and um and record with someone. I recorded th this new EP that I've just done. I actually recorded right here in this bedroom. <laughs> With, with this microphone here. So, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that was a whole other thing, uh, you know, also producing it myself. I'd never done anything like that, and I probably never will do it again because it was such a pain in the ass. But, um, yeah, I learned heaps, you know. It was, it was awesome to be able to just do that. Well, it's great as human beings. Like, we want to keep evolving and learning new things and obviously kind of hit that wall with, with the guitar, as you said. So Yeah, it just, it just sort of, I was just like, man, like, I, you know, I was in my late 20s when I decided that. I was just like, it's been, I've been at this for so long and I'm not where I want to be. Maybe this is not what I, this is not my strength, you know, maybe it's something else. Um, so I just started doing other things. Yeah, that's good. Expanding, growing as a human, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So did you write all of the songs on the EP yourself or did you have some co-writers come in and help? Or No, I just I just sat here at this desk and wrote everything. Um, yeah, and all the songs sort of came about in, in strange ways. They all have their own ways of showing up in your life kind of thing. There's one song on there called uh, Did Someone Break Your Heart? And I wrote that one morning at 4 a.m., um, the day before that, I was on my way home, driving through town, it was raining, and I stopped at the traffic lights, 
um, and the girl in the car next to me just looked completely shattered. I don't know what, I don't know her, I don't know who she was. Thank you, by the way, to whoever that is, because... You inspired the song. <laughs> you inspired this song, and I was just like, God, what happened to you? Did, you know, did someone break your heart? What happened? So that's, the, the title sort of came about, and then at 4 a.m. the next morning, we were having some roof work done on this house, and something fell off the roof at 4 in the morning and landed just behind that wall there, right next to where my head is where I sleep, and it woke me up. And suddenly all these lyrics started rushing in, so I got straight out of bed and I wrote that song in like two hours. Wow. Um, and that was, yeah, that was like the coolest thing that ever happened to me in my life at that point. I was like, wow, it only takes me, you know, a week to finish a song and this one just fell out. Um, so, yeah, it's, I love that kind of stuff. They all come about in their own strange ways. Um, yeah, and I just sort of go with it. I think you're the first person and it's the only time I've ever heard someone say that like, they're grateful to be woken up by a sound <laughs> at 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah, the rest of the day was rubbish, but I had this song that I was happy with, so. And it went on the EP, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Do you think you kind of got tips off, you know, Tom and Nick over the years with songwriting and all the other amazing people you worked with? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I've learned the most about music from Nick, Tom and Casey easily because they were always so far ahead. Mm. They, they always, um, I mean, when I joined this band, I didn't know what a major scale was or how a song fits in a key center. Like, how does it, what's a key center? How do you know that? Um, and they were all across most of this stuff, you know, like they're some of the most competent musicians I've ever met. Um, so obviously spending 10 years around them has really rubbed off on me. So yeah, I, I think I have them to thank for, to, to thank the most for, all of this kind of stuff, yeah. I've probably never said that to their face either, and I probably should. <laughs> I'm just going to grab this snippet of the interview and send it to them for you. Do that, do that. <laughs> look what Brody said about you guys. <laughs> so there are quite a few, you know, heartache songs on this EP, that's what I'm going to call them. Were, you know, did, did you get inspiration from this from other people, or is it a real life story? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, no, they're all they're all based on something that happened in real life. Um, why, what, what songs were you referring to? Ah, uh, well, the best version of myself kind of like at the beginning, I was like, oh, this is quite not. No, it's not uplifting at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was about. Um, and the girl that I wrote that about doesn't know that this song's about her yet, and I, I'm waiting to hear from her. Taylor Swift did her. <laughs> <laughs> No, I went on a date once, um, we were on, I was at a gig, and I met a girl in the front row of the gig, and she was like, oh, do you want to like go get ice cream or something after this gig? I was like, yeah, sure, and we went and hung out, and nothing really happened. Um, and it didn't affect me that much emotionally, but I, like most of my songs are like movies that are based on true events, they're just stretched out a bit, yeah. you know, <laughs> to be made more entertaining. Um, so I wrote that about about this little date that I went on after this gig, you know, we went and got ice cream, we we drive drove around in the hire car that we had at the time, we went up to a lookout, and then just sort of nothing happened. So, and I was just like, well, how can I, you know, how can I expand on that? So, yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Now I'm going to listen to that song a little bit differently now. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. This is the thing. I don't know how these songs come across to other people, whether, whether it's obvious that these things have happened to me or... I mean, I wrote, I wrote Famous because I was sitting in mum and dad's lounge room in the house that I grew up in. Mum and dad's house is probably over 100 years, about 110 years old now, and it was made with, like, green timber, so it got old and it all warped and none of it's square anymore. And dad's always complaining because he tries to build things onto this house and it's not square and nothing fits. And I was sitting in the lounge room and I looked at the windowsill and the deck, um, like, the rail on the deck next to it, and they were like like this, one of them was slanted one way, another one was slanted the other way, and I was like, this whole house is on a tilt. And that's kind of where I started thinking about, you know, writing the song Famous, just so I could build mum and dad a new house. Aww, that's so beautiful. <laughs> I think everybody listens to songs differently because a lot of the time they will listen to it and then think of something that, um, something in their life that they can relate that to. I don't think automatically they think of going, huh, Okay, so Brody wanted to be famous, or you know, he yeah, didn't yeah, do yeah, well with this yeah, girl, and she didn't like that version of himself, and things like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, that, yeah, that's exactly right. I, I guess um, when you write, um, I mean, I've always tried to write from the heart and, and write stuff that's, tr you know, true. Mm. To some respect. So, and I guess you know, we all go through the same stuff at some point, 
we all had, you know, the story, all the circumstances might change, but the stories can be quite similar. So if someone hears a song about something that happened to me, it, I'm hoping it might be relatable. You know, I'm hoping that other humans have similar experiences so we can all just sing about it. That's what I love about music. It's so powerful. Yeah, we need it more than ever right now, I think. Oh, yeah, we do. I keep saying to people if they're quarantined or have to stay inside, I'm just like, why don't you just work on your dreams? Work on things that you, you know, haven't had time to get done. And then you can just go out and do it. How good is that beautiful video from Italy where everyone's on the balcony singing the same song? That's so cool. That's, you know, that's... Well, yeah, that's all we've got left to do, so let's just do that. Exactly, we're all we're in the same circumstance, we've got to be there for each other. <laughs> so how did you come up with a lot of the, the melodies for the songs on the EP? Did you just jam out on the guitar and then it just kind of came to you? or? No, all sorts of different ways. Um, melodies to me are really important. I think they are the most important thing mm. about a song. You know, you can't just have... Well, actually you can. I was about to say you can't just have a melody. You can, you can just sing a melody sing a song without anything else and it's still the song um but i think yeah there's something magic in melodies that i'm always chasing i never feel like i've written the perfect melody i'm always chasing just you know that like beatles magic you know that kind of that you know like hey jude i'm always listening to hey jude and how that melody runs i'm just like that is just so perfect um how do i do that <laughs> you know <laughs> Uh, it comes in all sorts of different ways. Sometimes, um, sometimes I'll wake up. I had a dream the other night that I was writing a song with Taylor Swift, and I woke up with almost with that song in my head. So I, I wrote up, I got up and quickly wrote, sort of jotted it down and recorded a little bit of it, which was really cool. So they can happen in dreams. They happen. Um, they sometimes they can be incredibly difficult to find. Like I'll have something that isn't quite right, and it will take me two weeks to find exactly how I want that to be said or how I want it to sound and go. You know, it's it, it can happen in an instant or it can take way too long to find the perfect melody. Yeah. <laughs> but that's something I'm always chasing and I never feel like I've quite got it right. Well, I hope that song that, you know, came to you to you in the dream goes on, like, the next EP because that's going to make a really funny story in an interview. Yeah, how did this song come about? Oh, yeah, Dream with Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah, no, it will be. I, I had this song written and, and the verses just weren't they weren't captivating they weren't the, the melody was boring it didn't grab you um so i was just like oh maybe maybe i can have a dream tonight and i did about you know what can help something that can help that song and you know it was, it was me writing a Taylor swift and she was really into it and i woke up and i was like oh wicked oh it's this um and that ended up being what i'm going to record and I, i'm pretty sure that song will be on the next ep because i really love it that's awesome wow that's really cool good that it comes to you in your mind it obviously came from your subconscious to come in a dream and you just needed to relax <laughs> exactly and the other half of that song came to me while i was bushwalking up the mountain one afternoon so there you go it's when your mind is off something it comes to you yeah. but they always say your best ideas come in the shower it's because you're not really properly thinking about it. exactly exactly that happens a lot too in the shower that's yeah. happened a bunch of times yeah so in Total, how long do you think you've been working on this EP for? Um, once I decided that I was going to do it myself and I decided what songs they were going to be, um, it took a couple of months, maybe three months, because I was doing it all myself. It just took so long. Mm. You know, and I was trying to get it so perfect, and then I realised it wasn't going to be perfect ever, and I was just like, oh, you know what? At some point I had to call it and say, These are how, this is how the songs sound. I think it was about two months, two, three months from deciding it was definitely going to happen to having the finished product. That's actually quite quick. I thought it was going to be longer. There you go. Well, well, a lot of the songs were already written and were already, I mean, some of the songs were already released in other forms, mm. but they had re-recorded because I couldn't listen to them because I hated how they sounded. Well, as, as you said about the Beatles song, you know, you might get there eventually. You're not the Beatles right now. <laughs> yeah, no, we can all hope for that. <laughs> exactly. Just use them as inspiration. <laughs> So these songs are also a very different sound than the Wolf Brothers. What made you want to make that change? I like that country sound, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, look, it's just um, it's just what happened. I think country music for me, the big draw card was guitar, was the playing. Um, I really love a good bit of chicken picking, but when that sort of, when I stopped focusing on that, yeah, and I just started, I, it, was, it wasn't a conscious decision to sound like that. It, it just is what happens when I do music. Yeah. That's how it came out, you know, and I, I'd get excited about a song and 
that's how it is, you know, like it wasn't, um, yeah, it wasn't really a decision, it just happened that way, you know, and my influences probably came a lot from outside the country genre, mm. even after having been involved in it for so long. Um, it, it's, uh, yeah, I was just more emotionally engaged in other stuff and then that affected me more, I think, yeah. Okay, so who knows, you may be dabbling in other genres in the future with other EPs or albums. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the exciting thing, like, yeah, like, yeah, when you're a new artist and there's no preconceived thing of how you should sound or what genre it is, you can, you're so free, so free to do whatever you want, so, yeah. Make it yours. <laughs> Well, I definitely have a favourite on the EP as well. You know, one that I listened to several times in a row after I listened to it because it was so damn catchy is Lights Left On. That is that is a hit. Ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's my favourite too. I was trying to write something. Um, there's a lot of um, a lot of people use that U2 song, um, With or Without You, as a, as a template to sort of say, um, for choruses, you don't, you know, write a chorus that only has one phrase in it. Mm. So I was trying to combine that idea with like a more Ed Sheeran um, shape of you kind of thing. Yeah. That's on such a view. I was trying to combine those two ideas. Um, and that's just what happened, I guess. Just, yeah, that song. I was also trying to write, I had a friend who was like, she said, you should write something sexy. And I was like, oh, okay, I've never done that before. <laughs> Let's have a good that. <laughs> well, it's definitely a sexy song. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sexy but tasteful. I think there's a there's a line there, is it there? Yeah, no, because you can't. I mean, you can't go too far with that. But you know, it's like suggestive. Like it's yeah, yeah it's playful. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of other artists that you know aren't just suggestive. They just put it all out there, and you're like, well, <laughs> that's not what I was expecting to listen to. <laughs> yeah. And there is a line in your song, Famous, that says, someday I'm going to be famous. And I just wanted to let you know that, you know, you're, you're famous now, buddy, just in case you forgot, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I did really like that other line in the song, which is, uh, if I was a celebrity, I would get a discount. So I would love to know, have you ever used your somewhat celebrity status, if that's what you want to call it, to get a discount on something? or something for free, like even at a show or something. <laughs> no, that line came about because my dad does that. Oh, does he? <laughs> yeah, he goes around. He goes around to like Mitre 10 and Bunnings and things wearing a Wolf Brothers cap. And it's always a conversation starter. And then he can drop the fact that he's my dad. And you know, this was back when I was part of the Wolf Brothers. Oh yeah, my son's a guitarist. And then he gets discounts. Oh, cool, I'll give, oh, just give. Just give us 50 bucks for that one next, mate. And that, that just goes, goes around getting stuff cheap because his son was in the Wolf Brothers. Just so I've never, done, I've never done it, but Dad just goes to town on it. Wow, I would never have guessed that. And he can still do it because you're still the guitarist on the tours. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he does that a lot. Oh, my goodness. Have you ever found that you've gotten, you know, the celebrity treatment from people too? Do they, does it feel weird? People treat you a bit differently? Um, yeah, yeah, sort of. I don't know. I don't really, I don't really think about it. But, um, yeah, sometimes, you know, someone, someone wants to buy you a drink or something because you were part of some music they really like. That's pretty nice, really. Like, it's, you know, they just sort of want to have a chat about it and that, that's really cool. But, um... No, I don't, some of them really thought about it that way, you know. Well, I know you're really humble and, and down to earth, but have you requested any crazy things backstage at a show? Like, eating diva demands. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, I mean, it's the opposite of that. We, when we first started, our management team um, managed the McClymonts. So we got um, part of the contract when we do gigs. It's just, it's the McClymonts' old writer. We don't even have our own writer. Like, it's part of... The, it's a second-hand thing that, that, that all the festivals get. Like, hey, we've got to get them a full-length mirror and we've got to get them this and that. We always rock up to gigs and we're like, oh, we've got to change that rider. That's not ours. <laughs> so, no, we haven't done that. We're not the McClamonts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're like, so they rock up to some gigs and they're like, yeah, we're not going to get you a full, like, length wall mirror. And we're like, oh, no, we don't need that. Like, that's that's not it. Sorry, that's not our thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't expect that in a tent in the middle of a paddock, so it's fine. Wow, okay, well, there you go. Like, 
yeah. opens our eyes to how it was yeah. in the beginning for you. <laughs> yeah. But I, I didn't think that you did have any crazy demands. I was like, yeah, I've met all you guys and you're just so humble and down to earth. And that's something I love about you guys. Oh, thank you. There is something, I read Van Halen's book, there is something to be, to be said. They used to use that, you know, the whole no brown M&Ms thing? Yep. They used to use that as a quality control. And then the one gig they did that had brown M&Ms, the stage was put together so sloppy that it fell apart. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so that was like their quality control. If they rocked up and there was brown M&Ms, they were like, oh, okay, so what else didn't they pay attention to? Like, so there was, there's always been a reason for that, which I've quite, I quite like that story. So next time you're going to ask for no brown M&Ms? Yeah, I'm going to be like, if there's brown M&Ms, I'm going to worry about this. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you need to get as big as Van Halen to worry about that sort of stuff. So, you know. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. Hey. Maybe someday you'll be famous, hey! Uh, I see what you did there. You're welcome. Shows I've actually listened to the songs. <laughs> now, even though you've already achieved so much in your career, Brody, what else can we expect from you in the future? Will there maybe be a tour for this EP or anything in the future? To. Yeah, no, I'd love to do some solo gigs. Um, obviously, it's hard. I mean, trying to work that around constantly touring with the Wolf Brothers and Lee Kearney because that's my job, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, like it'd be really nice to build a bit of a profile and maybe do some solo gigs around the place. Obviously, I'd love to, you know, tour. You know, that just seems like an amazing thing that might happen in the future. But I think, um, look, for now, I'm just really focused on the writing and, and getting music out, showing people what I've got and everything. So, um, like I said, I'm already working on the next EP. Um, found a producer that we're going to start working on some tracks with soon as well. Um, I'm working with a guy down here as well. He's producing some stuff. It's I'm just I'm so in the creating mode that I haven't thought about what I'm going to do live yet. I would love to tour, um, so maybe in the future, yeah. In a way, I kind of like that because it gives me a chance to keep. You know, I'm, I've already got songs I really want to share. The EP only came out last week, and I'm already like, oh my god, I want to do this and <laughs> release this now. So it's kind of it's kind of cool that it gets consumed at such a fast rate because it means I can create and just and keep putting it out. Especially, as you said, while you're in the creative mode, you might as well do it. Yeah, yeah. and while we're all in lockdown, what else are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, while you, while you don't have, you know, what is it, writer's block, you might as well keep writing. Might as well do it. And are you nervous to perform on stage in the future if you do do any touring without the guys? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be like hiding behind your guitar a little bit. Oh yeah, it'll be it'll be such a change. You know, obviously I've been doing this for a long time, but that you know to be suddenly doing frontman stuff because for those of you who've seen a Wolf Brothers gig, I don't really talk because there's never been a need for that really. Yeah. It's just there'd just be three blokes talking over each other between songs and it would be rubbish. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was something that was kind of confronting. I have done a couple of solo gigs around the place and oh, done a few events and things like that. It's just me with an acoustic guitar, and I was just like, wow. I have to talk about stuff now. I've never done this. And it was kind of cool. I did actually enjoy it. Oh, that's good. Well, good luck with it all. Keep me updated. If another uh, EP or album comes out, you're just going to have to come back on the show. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm here. Anytime. And I know I asked you this in the previous interview, but your answer may have changed. Uh, what advice would you give to our audience today that might want to follow their dreams of becoming a uh, singer, should I say now? <laughs> and I know my last answer would have been, would have been keep learning songs that you really love and just follow this. Now it's just like, I mean, it's the same message really, but just a bit broader. Just whatever gets you excited, that's where you should be. And whatever scares you is also what you should be doing. Hmm. Um, otherwise you won't grow, you won't get anywhere. Yeah. So... I mean, I have to have, I have to do self promotion now, which scares the hell out of me. I hate doing that, but yeah, yeah. I mean, this sort of stuff's fine, but you know, posting stuff and, and showing people your music and saying, "Hey, listen to this," because I think it's good. That scares me. So you know, it means I have to do it. <laughs> you should be proud. It's a great product. So thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. No, you're welcome. I'm Makes it so much easier in my job to promote something I really like, so thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, stop it, you. Stop it. <laughs> mean every word. <laughs> and if the if our audience want to contact you or find out what you're up to in the future, where should they go? Um, all across my socials. Um, Bray Rambert, um, there's a Facebook like page, obviously Bray Rambert Music on Instagram. Just, yeah, just search my name. I should pop up somewhere. And I'll, uh, I'll keep in touch via that. Definitely. And 
thank you for coming on the show again. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, Lauren. You're very welcome. Just consider it your second home, okay? Just come on anytime. Oh, okay. Well, you're going to regret that. This is going to be a <laughs> Call up next week. I'm ready to come back on. <laughs> oh, I don't mind. I've got to fill air time, so. <laughs> we'll create a new segment somehow. I don't know. Advice from Brody or... Sure. Well, Life advice from a guy who's clearly can't give it. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you keep going on in your career, you're probably going to have more. <laughs> well, let's keep in contact as we always do and we'll make it happen in the future again. Absolutely. Thanks, Lauren. That's all right. Well, I hope you'll enjoy today's interview. If you'd like to check out any of our other interviews, visit our website, raveituptv.com. All the podcasts and videos are there for you to enjoy. But for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.